Hi, this is Gary Rosenzweig. On the MacMost podcast, I often show you how to do things using command line interface in the terminal window. In this episode, let's take a step back and look at some of the terminal window basics. To enter the terminal program, simply go into Applications, go into the Utilities folder in there, and look for Terminal. When you run it, you get a window just like this. You just type things in it to make things happen. So we'll type our first command, ls, which is a listing of what's in the directory. We're going to start at the user directory, which has the typical things that you see when you look in the Finder, desktop, downloads, music, that type of thing. Um, when you're using command line interface, you're always at a location on your hard drive. So right now we're in the user folder. If we want to change locations, we do cd for change directory. So we'll do cd and we'll go into the documents folder. Now when we do a listing, we see the files in the documents folder. Now notice that I typed a capital D for documents. That's because in most command line interfaces you need to match capitalization perfectly. You actually don't have to do that with the cd command here in terminal window, but I'd like to do it anyway. The ls command can be modified. For instance, you can do ls-l and get a long listing of what is in the directory. Instead of just listing the names of the files, you get a file on each line and you get things like its size and modification date, that type of thing. You can also do ls-a to list everything in the directory, even invisible files. So these are things that the Mac OS usually hides from you in the Finder because they're not your files, they're things that tell the Mac OS about that directory. But you can see everything there. You also always see the dot and double dot, which are the indicators of current directory and directory above this one. So for instance, if we wanted to go up a level, we would do cd dot dot, and now we are back up at the user level. If you ever want to see exactly where you are, type pwd, and it will give you the full listing. So we go into the Documents folder again. PWD. Now manipulating files in the command line interface is pretty simple and it just uses three different commands. So we'll look at what we have now. And we've got this test.txt file that I created in text edit. Now suppose I wanted to rename that. You actually don't rename, you move. You would move test.txt to new test.txt. And now when we list, we see that it actually has changed file names. We could actually change file names and keep it in the same directory or we could actually be moving into another directory at the same time but giving it a full file path. And The file path would look something like what we get when we do pwd which is a slash user slash macmo slash documents. We can say move that to uh, another folder there by just adding more or changing this. So if you want to actually copy a file you would do the cp command and you would give it two file names. The first one is newtest.txt, the original file, and the next one is the new file name. Now we list and there we go. We've got both newtest.txt and new newtest.txt. To remove, we just type rm and the name of the file. There we go. Now another cool thing we can do is we can use wildcards on command. So for instance, we do ls, we see these files. What if we wanted only the files that began with the letter n? We can actually do ls and star and we get a list of everything that begins with the letter n. The star represents anything. So you can see n star fits in with newtest.txt. You could uh, do all sorts of different things like, for instance, removing files that began with the letter n. Now if you ever want to find out more about a command, there is a way to get help inside the terminal. It's the manual, which you get by typing man. Man space and the name of a command like ls brings up this little document viewer. You can page through it with a space bar or go line by line with return, Q to quit. And you can find out all about different commands like ls or cp or mv. And when you see experts using the command line interface, you'll see that they go pretty fast. One of the ways they do that is by using a couple shortcuts. Like for instance, say I did ls and I said, oh no, I'm going to do ls-l and then I want to actually use a command I've used before. I can use the up arrow. I'm going to press the up arrow right now and it gives me the last command. I'm going to press it again and give me the command before that. And I can do down arrow to go between those back to a blank line that I was working on. So if I wanted to repeat a command, I just do up arrow and return. And if there's a command that was, say, 10 lines ago, I can do up arrow all the way through these different commands that we've been working with and down arrow back through them. Another thing you could do is automatic completion. So say I wanted to actually go ahead and remove new test. 
So I type rm space. I start typing ne. Now maybe newtest.txt is not that long of a file name, but suppose it's a very long file name. Well, I hit the tab key and what the command line interface is going to do is it's going to try to figure out what I was going to type. In this case, the only file there beginning with ne was newtest.txt. So it immediately went and figured out that that's probably what I want and it completed the line for me. So that's a really quick look at the basic things you can do with the terminal window. If you know how to do this, then you can go ahead and use some more advanced commands that help you do some very useful things. And we'll be touching on those in future podcasts. Until next time, this is Gary Rosenzweig with MacMost Now.